Hi everyone. So if you're an astrophotographer like me, by now you've probably heard of Russell Crowman's Blur Exterminator plugin for PixInsight. So I decided to download it for myself and test it out on a variety of images to see whether it's worth purchasing and uh, to see what all the hype is about. Right now I have downloaded it and I'm going to pull it up here. So Blur Exterminator. So that's what the application looks like and today we're going to be trying it out on a couple of uh, images that I've taken over the years. So uh, a couple of points to remember uh, what Blur Exterminator does is deconvolution. So basically it, it uh, takes uh, whatever data that you have in an image and it applies a special mathematical algorithm to it to compensate for any kind of blurring that's caused either by the atmosphere or by poor tracking or poor focusing. So uh, it, it knows what a regular star is supposed to look like. A star is a, a very round, tiny point source. And if the stars in your image do not look like that, if they look uh, like, like out of focus blobs or if they look like comets, then the software knows that, that that's an issue. It's an aberration. That's not what a star actually looks like. So then it applies a mathematical function to make the star round and then it applies that same mathematical function to everything else around it, whether it's a galaxy or a nebula. So that is what allows it to sharpen the details. Um, now a few things to remember what this software fixes are things such as guiding error, uh, astigmatism, primary or secondary coma in the image, chromatic aberration, which is color fringing that you've probably seen, and also uh, variations in the size of your stars all across the image. So if you have any sort of image tilt, for example, in your system, the stars on one side of your image might be bigger than on the other side. Uh, so that that is also something that the software tries to fix. So if you get this software, it does come with some documentation as well. So on the Blur Exterminator process, if you click this button down here, it opens up the documentation. So you can move this out of the way, actually. There we go. So this opens up the documentation for Blur Exterminator, and it has quite a bit of information. So if you want to dive into the nitty gritty, you can do all of that over here. So I'm going to open up one of the sample images. Let's start off with this one. That's Messier 45, the Pleiades. And I'm using this image because uh, this is a fairly typical image that you might try to apply Blur Exterminator to. So we can get started with this. Uh, but a couple of things to know first is that Blur Exterminator is best applied to linear images. And a linear image is an image uh, that you have just finished stacking or run through the weighted batch pre-processing uh, process and you haven't applied anything else to it yet, you haven't uh, you know, used uh, curves on it or done any sort of uh, extra processing to it. So this is how an image uh, comes out after you finish stacking. So the image is going to look fairly dark. You're not gonna see a lot of detail there, uh, but this is an image in its linear format. So when you stretch an image on Windows by pressing Control A or by uh, hitting one of these, uh, this little monitor looking icon. So once you hit that, it stretches an image. This is just a visualization. It hasn't actually stretched the image. This is just an auto stretch. It is applied to show you what kind of detail is in there. But to actually stretch an image, you would have to use a tool like screen, screen transfer function and histogram transformation to make the image permanently look like this instead of still being in its raw untouched format. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to auto stretch the image so we can actually see what's going on uh, and keep it in its linear format. Uh, and we're going to apply Blur Exterminator to this. But first, uh, one of the things we're going to do is crop this image because there are a couple of issues around the outer edges. So you can crop using dynamic crop. So uh, right over here, you can also just search for dynamic crop, but I'm just going to bring it up. There's the dynamic crop tool. So now I can select 
what parts of the image I want to crop. Once I've done that, I hit this green check mark, and that ends up cropping the image. So I can close that. Uh, now, the next step we're going to do here is dynamic background extraction. So uh, you can also use automatic background extraction, but in my case, uh, the the issues on the outer areas over here, this kind of color cast that you're getting is a bit complicated. So dynamic background extraction would work better for that. So I just find dynamic background extraction, bring it over, and I'll leave most of the settings at default and apply. And so it generates this map of the corrections that it did. We don't need that. I'll close that. But this over here is the corrected image. Now our image has been cropped. So I've gotten rid of the aberrations on the very edges. I've done dynamic background extraction to it. And now we are ready to use a Blur Exterminator. So because uh, running this process does take a little while, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a preview of a small area first, and then I'll apply dynamic background extract, uh, sorry, blur exterminator to that little preview. And if I like the results, then I can apply to the entire image. Applying it to the whole image is going to take a while, so we don't want to spend time doing that. So using this button up here, this is the preview button. I'll click on this button and then generate a new preview. And this is at the very top underneath a workspace for me. So I'm going to select an area like uh, this one over here. There we go. We just want to generate a small preview. And then the preview shows up over here on the left. You can click on it and that shows you the preview. Um, what I'm going to do is bring up Blur Exterminator. I'll leave all the settings at default and I will drag and drop this triangle onto the image. Okay, this is the result that we have gotten. So this is before, this is after, before, after, before, after. So as you can see, the stars look a lot smaller in the after image, and the details also look better within this uh, nebula itself. So. Let's try that again, before, after, before, after. So it has sharpened some details over here, so that looks great. Now let's try this on another image. We'll try it on an image of the Iris Nebula. So I'll auto stretch, and now we can create a preview. So let's create a preview over here. There we go. Now created a preview, I can click on this preview, and now I can apply Blur Exterminator to this preview so it doesn't take us a really long time to process uh, our view. That way we can test out a lot of different settings quickly. So reset Blur Exterminator. We'll leave all the settings at default and just drag and drop this triangle onto the preview. Now we can use this preview undo and redo button to reset the preview and then reapply the changes. So undo, redo, undo, redo. Uh, and again, you can also do the same thing by hitting the Control Shift Z button. So Control Shift Z, so undo, redo, before, after, before, after. So you can see the changes. The stars look a lot smaller in the after image. You can also see how much sharper the center of the nebula looks. So it has really enhanced those details. And this is all completely regular natural detail. It's not creating any false artifacts uh, like if you were using, let's say, Topaz, Denoise AI, or something like that. So this uh, Blur Exterminator is doing a really good job at recovering a lot of the detail from the center of the nebula. So phenomenal. That does a beautiful job there. And again, you can also try applying this to the, to the edge of the image to see how it improves improves the stars. So I can create another preview at the very edge and then apply Blur Exterminator with all the same settings to that preview and see how uh, it improves that area. Okay, now let's try that again. So this is before, after, before, after, 
I'm going to zoom in a bit more before, after. So one of the things you can see it as fixed is any sort of uh, aberrations in the shapes of the stars at the very edge, for example. You can see that it has fixed the color fringing. So there was some orange showing up on the outsides. So that has been fixed. Look at this star above this cross on the screen at the top left. So that color dispersion, dispersion has been fixed. The stars look a lot sharper and a lot smaller and rounder as well. So it has done a pretty good job at the very edge as well. And now if we wanted, we could apply these same settings to the entire image. Now let's look at another example. We can uh, get out of this one. Let's look at Messier 42. So this is the Orion Nebula. And this would be an example of an image taken by a beginner with fairly basic equipment. So this was taken with my Canon 6D, uh, which I had picked up off Kijiji for 300 bucks, which is our version of Craigslist. And uh, it was also taken with a Rokinon 135 f2 lens, which again is, is fairly cheap compared to the price of a telescope. And it was all tracked on a basic star tracker. So I'm going to create a preview select just the Orion Nebula and I'll zoom in and add 100%. So let's adjust, uh, actually let's leave everything as is at the basic settings and drag and drop and we'll see what kind of improvement uh, this can make to a very basic image. Uh, now one of the things to remember is that uh, Blur Exterminator works best on, on higher quality data. So if your image has a high signal to noise ratio, usually because you're exposed for hours and hours, it'll do a better job compared to an image that, that you had only spent, let's say, you know, 10 minutes taking. Uh, although this image itself, I think I'd only taken 20 or 25 minutes on it, so it's, it's not very high signal to noise ratio, but let's look at the before and after. So control shift Z, the before, after, before, after. We can zoom in a little bit more. So this was the before, this was the after. So you can see the stars look a lot smaller. The chromatic aberration, the purple fringing on the outside of the stars is largely gone. And looking at the very edge of the nebula here, it looks a little bit sharper, but if I look in here, yeah, I can definitely see some an improvement in the sharpness of the nebula itself as well, especially these darker lanes. And looking at the Running Man nebula, I can definitely see some improvement in the sharpness of the nebula there as well. But the main improvement on this lower signal to noise ratio image is the stars. So the stars do look a lot better. And now my favorite image that I've been hoping to show you. This one was taken a few years ago once I had started figuring out what to do. And it does have a higher signal to noise ratio. I think I had spent something like about four hours on this image actually gathering this data through my 8 inch Newtonian reflector and my ASI 1600 monochrome camera. And this was just through an L filter, so this is a black and white monochrome image. And again, it is linear as well, so you can see this is what it looks like before I auto stretch it. And this is what it looks like after I auto stretch it. So this is still a linear image, just the preview is being auto stretched. Now this is a higher signal to noise ratio image than the one of the Orion Nebula, so we should get better results here. So what we're going to do is let's create a preview uh, around this galaxy. There we go. And I'll zoom in at 100%. And I'm going to leave everything on automatic as we did before. And I'm just going to drag and drop. Okay, now let's look at that. Let's undo and redo. So this is the after. Before, after, before, after. The difference is absolutely phenomenal. So when you have a good quality image to start with, the difference uh, that Blur Exterminator makes is nothing short of amazing. I'm actually going to decrease the brightness uh, of this image a little bit using screen transfer function so we can see the core a bit better. And uh, I'm doing this just the way that I had shown you before with the other images. There we go. So I'm going to decrease the brightness a bit. There we go. Okay. Now let's redo and undo. Uh, so this is before 
after, before Blur Exterminator, after Blur Exterminator. Now, look at this region over here, this bridge where the bigger galaxy is uh, attached to the smaller galaxy. This is before. You can see that there is some structure and some detail over there, but after, there is no comparison. This is way, way, way sharper. Now, if you're wondering how we know whether this detail that's being recovered by Blur Exterminator is real detail or not, well, uh, I've got you covered. So here is an image from the Hubble Space Telescope that I just pulled up to do a comparison. So I'll move it over here and we'll zoom into this region by the galaxy. So as you can see in the Hubble image and this image over here, this is all real detail that has been recovered by Blur Exterminator. Uh, so if we go back to this image and we do undo and redo, so you can see this detail that was recovered, this, these dark lanes. So you can't see much detail in the, unblurred in the blurred image, but in the unblurred image, good amount of detail. I bring back the, the Hubble image. So now you can see a good comparison uh, between the Hubble image and my image taken with my little 8-inch Newtonian. Now if you look at this dark region over here, you can see that very same region in the Hubble image. Um, and it's very, very close. Like You see a lot of the same details. This little knot in the Hubble image is visible right over here. So there we go. Now they're about they're about the same size. Of course, the Hubble image is much, much sharper than mine. I mean, I took this in four hours, uh, you know, from a Bortle 3 site. So the Hubble image is, of course, much, much sharper, but you can see that the same details that are visible in my sharpened image are also visible in the Hubble image. So that's how you know that the details being recovered here are real. They're not an artifact. Yeah, very, very interesting uh, piece of software and it does a phenomenal job. Uh, so looking at all of these examples, I hope I have uh, shown you the value of, uh, of deconvolution, whether you do it manually or whether you do it using this software. Now, a few other things to know about this, uh, about using this software for deconvolution as opposed to doing it manually is that the software will apply deconvolution differentially to different parts of the image. So if the stars in the center of your image are sharper and the image looks looks good, uh, you know, it'll just sharpen the image. It won't affect the stars as much. If near the edge of your image, the stars uh, need more sharpening because they're aberrated because of issues with your optical train, it'll apply more, uh, I guess, a star correction to those uh, areas. So that's something that you can't do manually, but this software does a great job of that. It also does chromatic aberration reduction. So uh, overall, yeah, it's a phenomenal piece of software. And a couple of other tips to remember uh, that, that might be useful for you if you are going to be using this software is that um, if you are going to be doing, uh, let's say, LRGB imaging with a monochrome camera, if you're a more advanced astrophotographer, it's best to apply deconvolution to, a, to the combined RGB image instead of applying it to every single channel first and then combining those channels into an RGB image. So uh, to combine them, you would be using RGB combination in most cases. So use RGB combination, combine the images into one RGB image and then apply Blur Exterminator to that image. It works better that way because it'll also correct for chromatic aberration, which you can't do if you apply Blur Exterminator to each individual channel first before combining. Um, also, one of the other things to know is that if you're doing LRGB imaging as an advanced astrophotographer or an intermediate astrophotographer, you're taking luminance frames and then combining them with your RGB frame. It's uh, best to first apply Blur Exterminator to your combined RGB frame, then apply it separately to your luminance frame, and then combine the luminance and uh, the RGB frame using LRGB combination tool. So it works better that way because your luminance uh, frame might have a different star profile to your RGB images because in most cases you will be using a different gain setting and a different exposure setting for your luminance image. 
Also, if you're like me and you do RGB imaging and then you add some hydrogen alpha data to that imaging, again, what you'd want to do is combine your RGB images using channel combination, apply Blur Exterminator to that, then separately apply Blur Exterminator to your hydrogen alpha data, and then combine them all together using NBRGB uh, script or whatever way you do that. So because your hydrogen alpha data is going to have a different star profile to your uh, RGB data. So if you combine RGB, you add hydrogen alpha to it, and then you try to apply Blur Exterminator at the end to everything, it could give you suboptimal results. So overall, I mean, it seems to do a phenomenal job and, um, you know, I'd gotten a trial for the tool initially, but I think I'm going to end up buying it. I think it's well worth the hundred bucks that you're going to spend on it. And uh, personally for me, I, I did not like doing deconvolution on my images because it took so long to get good results and it involved a lot of tinkering, but this makes it a one-click process. So it does a phenomenal job at that, so I would definitely recommend this tool. And if you do end up using it, let me know what you think. And uh, well, good luck and clear skies.